COVID, Boris is fighting for his life, PPE shortages everywhere, food shortages everywhere, you guys can remember. Me and Sumit had just started our supply chain company to try and solve some of the issues that were unearthed during COVID, but we'd hit a brick wall. I then get a phone call from my friend Aaron in Sri Lanka. His friends had all worked in garment manufacturing and they were complaining about late deliveries from their suppliers. According to Aaron, it was absolute carnage. Now, at the time, I'm speaking to people from different sectors, different industries, but I kept getting calls from Aaron. The situation was bad. I then stumbled across a little bit of research by McKinsey, who found that apparel supply chains are the second most exposed supply chains to disruptions. Now it gets interesting. The theory was matching the reality. I'm getting more phone calls from Aaron. There's something going on here. So I did the only sensible thing. I get on a one-way flight to Sri Lanka, get deep inside these factories, and that starts a three-year journey of getting deep inside the belly of global apparel supply chains. While we were there, we were told over and over again that actually it's the people here that are sourcing from those manufacturers that have a bigger problem because the liability of the risk changes, and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Same problem, but the scale of the problem is bigger for the importers in this side of the world. So today, I want to share with you everything that we've learned about risk and resilience in apparel supply chains, and I have two objectives. Objective number one is to tell you why you should prioritize risk management, and secondly is how do you do that with technology? This is the story that I've seen play out over and over again in this industry and across every other industry, and this is what the, the rough outline of the story looks like. Three years ago, procurement and supply chain we're living in good times. The world had peace, energy, stability. Then came this little virus from central China, and everything we thought we knew about supply chains was completely flipped on its head, starting with the Suez Canal. And then over the next two to three years, everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. And overnight, procurement and supply chain professionals went from living in an old, stable environment to this new, uncertain world, which I think can be best explained by this diagram. It's by the New York Federal Reserve Bank measuring global supply chain pressures. We can see all the way up until about 2019, pressure on supply chains was low. Then pressure shoots through the roof when COVID happened, and it's been volatile since then. The problem is our tools and systems and processes were built for this low-pressure environment and that they've collapsed under this high-pressure environment. Summarized in layman's terms is in 2023, you can't manage your supply chains on Excel. So how bad is the situation really going to get? Well, the World Bank and the IMF estimate one-third of the world's countries are experiencing three big shocks. Number one, at risk of bankruptcy. Number two, energy price increases. Number three, food price increases. In other words, the situation is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. This is the new environment, chaos and uncertainty. This is an acronym you'll hear a lot of, VUCA. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. This is the new normal. This is the operating environment everybody here has to contend with. And we believe in this new environment, where chaos is the new normal, the winning capability is going to be superior risk management. Because anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And when things go wrong, it is absolutely catastrophic. It is deadly for your business. The first report is by Oracle, and they found 80% of consumers would switch brands because of a delay and shortage. In other words, if your orders do not arrive on time, you will lose customers, they will go to competitors, and they will never come back, or they may never come back. Second thing, 42% of one year's operating profits is lost every decade due to supply chain disruptions. That's according to McKinsey. And finally, the lasting impact of supply chain disruptions and delays. 
38% of executives report brand and reputational damage as the biggest cost of supply chain disruptions. It's the lasting impact of delays to your orders. So what is the probability of these catastrophic costs happening to you guys in apparel? Well, pretty high. And it's the reason it's high, and if there's one message that I need to convey to everyone is, in supply chains, there is a trade-off between cost and risk. In this room right now, I'd say probably 80% of the manufacturers I've seen here are Asian manufacturers. They're low cost, but they carry more risk. And about 20% that I've seen are European manufacturers that are way more expensive, but they carry less risk. This is the trade-off that everyone in here has to contend with. And our thesis is, you can't all bring production closer to home because you need to be competitive in your costs and your price. So that's why you're sourcing from Asia. But if you're going to get the cost benefit and you're going to carry more risk, at least spend some resources building capabilities to hedge some of the risk with technology, with processes, with systems. So what can go wrong? This is a report by MIT about all of your supply chain uncertainties. Let's look at some of the big ones. The macro shocks, natural disasters, war, terrorism, demand fluctuations, um, manufacturing issues like, I don't know, unstable manufacturing processes, supply issues like inability to handle demand, transportation bottlenecks, financial issues. This is an overwhelming list of things that could go wrong, and because you're in apparel, have a higher probability of going wrong. You can't manage this. Nobody can manage this. So the way we begin to manage all of these uncertainties is the way we categorize them. And the best way to categorize them is what could go wrong in your endogenous risk, and that's related to the supplier itself. And what could go wrong outside the supplier in the operating environment? That's your exogenous risk. Now, how do all of these risks and all of these uncertainties play out on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I'm about to show you. And you might be surprised at how much in common you have with procurement managers from the manufacturers. All of this supply chain uncertainty translates into overwhelmed supply chain and procurement professionals. They have to place orders and make sure those orders arrive on time and in full. And in Asia, and I'm sure here as well, they are constantly reacting and constantly firefighting to disruptions. Good stat on how many are burned out, 55% according to Kilvar. The reason they're all burnt out is because they do not have the tools to manage all of this chaos. On the left-hand side is the level of visibility that all of us as consumers have when we place a $20 order on Amazon. On the right-hand side is the level of visibility most people have when they're placing $20 million worth of orders. It's a spreadsheet. Now, we believe that the problem is in your workflows, the way you ensure that these goods arrive on time. Let's break it down on what's going on in the factories and really try to ask yourself, how similar is this workflow to myself? Because I bet it's very high. So this is Abigail. She's a procurement manager for one of our customers, a manufacturer. Every week, she has two critical meetings, one with the production planning team, one with the supply chain team. To prepare for those meetings, she needs to provide an update for all 150 purchase orders from suppliers that she's responsible for. The way she does that is she has a spreadsheet. She tracks all of her orders on Excel. In fact, this is the most important part of her job, this output. She walks into the office. The first thing she does is her order follow-up. That means contacting her suppliers to ask, what's the status of my order? What's my expected delivery date? She takes that information in manually, fills in her Excel sheet, takes the Excel sheet into her meetings, and says everything's on track. Then, about 12 o'clock, she places her new orders. And in the afternoon, she deals, to is she deals with issues to her orders, of which 60% of her issues are related to late deliveries. So in the morning, she's trying to make sure orders arrive on time. In the afternoon, she deals with late orders. The way she does her job isn't fit for 2023. Most shockingly, this is the workflow that's standardized across this industry, across different industries for procurement and supply chain. Now, fortunately for her, she has a new AI assistant.
So what's happening here? Now this product hasn't actually been released yet. It gets released next month to our early customers. But what's actually going on, we're just going to bring the demo up. But just before I get there, what the technology is doing, these are your uncertainties. This is providing you coverage over your uncertainties. This is the role that technology plays. You're carrying so much uncertainty, invest in the technology that's going to help you hedge some of these risks that you are inadvertently carrying. So here's how it works. The chat UX AI feature sits on top of an order management platform. So I'll give you the day in the life of a procurement manager. Abigail walks into the office. First thing she does is she can see which of her orders are on track, what's awaiting a response from a supplier, and what she needs to focus on. Immediately, she can now manage by exceptions. This is really critical terminology to understand. Where does she need to focus? Rather than spreading herself thin, she focuses on the orders that need her attention. Underneath, she's able to see all of her suppliers, the orders that she's placed, the latest x mil date, total delays, the status, and really importantly, the milestone of the order, whether the order's just been placed, whether it's under production, quality assurance, in transit, all of the documents and all of the risks. Now, fortunately for Abigail, she gets alerts and notifications every time there is a potential risk to an order. Sumit, could you just go to the other one? We have an AI that's analyzing 50,000 news articles an hour and a million tweets an hour. And it's filtering through all of that to find issues that could delay your orders. So if you take this one, for example, that top one, spinning mill in coin butter to stop production and sale of yarn from Saturday. If you guys have South Asian garment manufacturers here, their spinning mills, probably 80% chance is in coin butter in India. So we detect the risk early. We show which orders could be impacted and which of your supplier could be impacted. Another one might be this one here. China evacuates 40,000 people from floods in Sichuan, more rain expected. So we have a supplier in Sichuan, we have active orders from this supplier. You get the risk. You get the risk, the supplier, and then which of my orders could be impacted. But to tell you the truth, having looked at the workflows for God knows how long now, most of the issues that are going to lead to your delays aren't these big seismic catastrophic shocks. They're silly things. They're miscommunication. They are documents that had one or two errors. Sumi, can you just go to notifications? And if you scroll down. So this is my workflow notifications. These are things that me, as a procurement manager, as a supply chain manager, I need to deal with. So here, this supplier has just given me a new delivery date. I need to now approve or reject it. Most of the times, I'm going to reject it. New document. Another huge cause of delay if you're importing as well as documents. Errors on documents, late documents, documents not being sent to the right person. So the supplier has just uploaded the document, and I now need to review it. Is everything OK? So you have a set of issues that lead to delays that are related to the workflow and a set of issues that are outside the workflow that could impact it. Now I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you um, the level of granularity within each order. And then, but before we get there, I'm going to show you shipments. So if you have 12 week leads, lead time for an order, six weeks is with a supplier, six weeks is in transit. I can see all of my containers from source port to destination port. And if we click inside one, we're able to track it in with a real time ETA. Now let's go inside a specific order, one order. And we're going to show you the level of visibility inside one order. So this is my order. So I can see a timeline of the order from when I place the order through to all the key milestones. And then on the right-hand side, any comments from the supplier. In my communication hub, communication is a massive issue that you guys are going to be facing. We integrate in with your Outlook, just like a CRM. And all your communications are now structured in one place, minimizing errors. Um, my OK. So, how the updates work. 20 to 30% of a procurement manager's time is spent chasing suppliers on latest delivery dates. We automate that entire process to free up two to three hours a day. So here, I've just asked my supplier for an update for a set of purchase orders. The supplier is now going to receive an email. He doesn't have um, any portals or anything like that. He responds back to the emails 
and then we capture that information and we put it onto, uh, onto the platform for you to see. So documents, all of your documents, not the sexiest part, but probably the most important. Let's look inside one, zoom it. All your documents managed in one place. And then finally, I want to show you the level of coverage that we have over the external environment. We map on your global supply chain. In green, you have your supply locations. In blue, you have your ports. So you're seeing real-time port congestion data. And in red, these are all of the risks. All of the risks that are happening right now or recently that you need to be aware of. The data get, gets updated every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, we're analyzing a lot of data to tell you anything that could go wrong in your supply chain. Some of the issues, what do we have? Heat waves in China. Ah, oh, that, that one's an interesting one. Landslides in Turkey. You only see risks where, which are close to a supplier or the transit route of the vessel. So all of this is filtered and then tagged to which supplier and then which active orders that you have with that supplier. Just to give you an idea as well on how valuable this data is, we have a lot of enterprise customers, companies that are 20, 30, 40 billion dollars in revenue, and they're buying a lot of just the data because risk management is a board level priority for big companies. What I've seen is big companies prioritize it, small companies, SMEs, risk management isn't even in your terminology. You have other priorities, like sales. My message to you guys is start thinking about risk. Start building a sourcing strategy around risk and start managing your workflows, the way you manage getting these orders in on time in a more risk-aware way, and technology can help you do that. So that's about it. I um, would love to answer some questions if anyone has any or wants to get started on, on this journey of uh, risk and resilience in their garment supply chains. Um, hiya. Uh, so does, does the risk include, I know you, every, every example I saw there was natural kind of disasters. Um, I was slightly late, so you, I, I might have missed it already, but was there any like, um, does it, is there other risk areas as well that it encounters within the data, such as political upheaval, maybe something like that? Yeah, yeah. So you have a set of risks that are outside of your supply chain. Things like COVID, natural disasters, political unrest, your macro shocks. Why these are important is that they happen less in frequency, but when they do happen, they're catastrophic. 20% of your risks are going to account for 80% of the impact. And those big catastrophic shocks like COVID, those are mainly external shocks. And then on the other side is there's a, a set of risks that are internal in your supply chain, like your documents, like your communications. So we cover both. We're covering any risk that could delay an order so you get a heads up and you can be proactive with your suppliers, with your customers, and uh, find out mitigation strategies early enough. Anyone else? Looks like we're good. Thank you very much, Aman. Okay. Thank you.